I'm gonna look at my comments. You guys ready? Prophetic word, this is about finances. This is so important. There's a divine reorganization. I'm gonna read this. You guys know me, I read the words, but I'm gonna to respond to it in just a second. But I read this. Sometimes I, I just get inspired. And I feel <clears throat> that the way that God gives me these words, there's an anointing in how I write them. I'm a writer first. Before I'm a speaker, I'm a writer. Speaking, I had speech impediments. I talked too fast. I couldn't say R's forever. And I've had to learn how to speak, whereas writing has always been second nature to me. So I love to write. And then now I'm going to speak and write, which is good. So thank you so much again. Kim, thank you for that super sticker. You are amazing. Yes, thank you for the support. Okay, so let me give you the prophetic word. Again, I'm going to read it, and then I will share it with you, share my thoughts on it. But let's talk about this. So there is a divine reorganization that's going on around the globe in government, industries, corporations, and this recession period, and it's not just a result of global spending and inflation. It's a reorder from heaven to put power in the hands of some kingdom people who are going to use resources that are being so misused for their true kingdom purpose now. There's an actual wealth transfer happening right now. Now, this comes from Proverbs 13, 22. Good people leave and inherit their grandchildren, but the sinner's wealth passes to the godly. Now, this is a principle that's in scripture that we saw happen in Israel, that there's times that there was kingdoms that had risen up against God and his people, that God would give the Israelites victory over them and they would inherit all of their wealth. We're gonna see this happen, that God's gonna give victory over people in industries, God's gonna give victory in people in politics, God's gonna give victory in people in places like tech companies and in projects. We're gonna watch this and we're gonna see sinners' wealth pass to the, God, to the godly. Balenciaga could be one of those companies that as it gets judged and as this whole franchise of companies that have been okay with this start to come down and they, they're we see them for what they are now that someone's going to rise up in fashion like maybe you know we have nancy Vu, who's one of our friends who is in the fashion industry who's amazing people are going to rise up and they're going to take on those same places those influence platforms and those places of wealth and influence out of a kingdom mentality there are companies and individuals who have been walking with god and setting up a structure that can hold the transfer and they know that the finances are resources to build kingdom projects with not just personal wealth. I had a vision that at different points in time in this generation that God has handed out talents and those who have been faithful believers have gotten these talents. Those that have stewarded these talents are about to get a multiplication from heaven. Some of this multiplication will be because of whole industries that have misused their talents or buried them or, or have gotten caught up in politics and principles alone without actual purpose. Their talents are being stripped from them and being handed by heaven to believers like you. We're going to hear about an increase of global companies who have kingdom values getting raised up. We're going to see overnight tech and media companies rising up to fill the voids of now talentless companies. We're going to see books and music emerge that will fill a void. Movies and programming from God's spirit of creativity that will emerge. And we're seeing that. I've just reported to you guys some of these things even before I wrote this word. As a large corporation's fall, we're gonna see an emerging of something God wanted to put into place. I believe that God is giving orders right now from heaven, now receive this. God's giving you orders from heaven for wealth to be assigned, and it has been taking many of you through a process to have the character and the fruit of the spirit, to where the wealth can be stewarded without crushing you. This wealth will build a legacy of projects and a container of faith for a coming move of God. It is so much wealth, this is beyond what we can understand. Don't despise the days that you get the word that the resources are coming, the money is on its way for the projects, companies, purposes, and then it feels delayed. God's building his nature inside of you, and where others have crashed or crashed or burned out over the pressure of finances, he's building resilience in you so that you, as you pursue the purposes he has, there won't be just enough, but there's gonna be abundance. He's also building the other end where the money is being transferred from. He's dismantling whole systems. He's creating a testimony in the wealthy. He's changing the hearts of venture capitalists, of bankers, of billionaires, and people in finance that are called to help you. For many, it's been tight. It feels like it can't get tighter without falling apart, but God will show up. What you thought was going to be here last month, last year, before the pandemic, it's, it's for this time. The orders are being sent out for this season from God himself for the sake of generosity towards the plans for Jesus and his kingdom. We know for Jesus to get his reward, for all that's deserved by him, there's great transfer of power, wealth, and influence on his people. It's happening, and you're going to understand why it was worth waiting for, and you're going to understand that building sometimes seems the opposite in your own life, 
or maybe there's a wilderness season, but this is refiner's fire and it's been hot, but it has not incinerated you. He is ready to open the hatch. The vessels like you are ready. Where you watch others with similar prophecies and promises or destinies from God jump ship and abandon their faith for it, you stayed. You believed. You hoped against hope, and that hope will be rewarded. This won't be tainted wealth or money earned by compromise. It will be on display wealth, wealth that shows what integrity and in the character of God looks like. Proverbs 10.22 says the blessing of the Lord makes a person rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. And that's the kind of wealth that's coming. God is doing it. Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8 says, But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Now, this is important as we talk about this for just a minute, that many of you have been through a season that looks the opposite of stewardship. Now, when we talk about wealth transfer, it doesn't mean you get a car and you get a car and you get a car. This is not Oprah Winfrey. Uh, you know, God's not like Oprah in heaven saying, everybody's getting money. God's looking for those who are aligning with his purpose and his destiny. And he wants to resource that purpose and destiny. He wants to resource the souls getting reached, the people getting saved, the purposes of God in the industries he wants to resource those who are looking at agriculture and saying, in my generation, we're going to heal the soil. God is looking at those who are looking at the environment and saying, in my generation, we're going to heal the environment. The tech companies, in my generation, we're going to build the best connection, connecting devices. We're going to build something that is a, a container for the harvest fields that God says are right. So when you're looking at this, this is not a prosperity message of everybody's going to get rich and live in bigger houses. This is a message that if you have a destiny, God wants to resource it. And there's a transference of wealth power to do it in our generation. We're going to start to see an increase of transference. Some of you are coming out of the wilderness. It's been so long you forget what it's like to be on the other end. But God's going to bring you out. And I'm going to encourage you, don't grow weary in this final stretch. Don't grow weary as things maybe still feel the opposite. Or maybe you had enough funding to get somewhere, but you need the viral. You need the multipliers. You need something to happen right now. I'm going to encourage you in that season, be incredibly generous with your time your gifts, your energy, and your current finances. Make sure to be generous. And I watched my show last week where I talk about the Barna Group and generosity and how Christians have been taught to be generous, but just inherently by how we follow God, and especially if you're a churchgoer, that churchgoers are some of the most generous people in the world because we learn how to receive by giving. And the Lord is setting up some of you for epic, epic inheritance and to receive things that don't even belong to you, but you're gonna give yourself into that season. So I'm gonna encourage you to be very generous to maybe it's ministries or maybe it's at worst people groups, maybe it's to projects, maybe it's to single mothers or widows, maybe it's to ministries like ours. I'm gonna encourage you to be generous because that generosity is gonna be one of the keys that helps you. The other thing is don't sit on your talents. If God's saying, write the book, write the book. Even if you don't know where it's gonna go, how it's gonna be distributed, who's gonna edit it. If God's saying, make the CD, make the CD. If God's saying, start the business, Start the business. Do the first thing you do. File the business license. In most countries, it doesn't cost that much to file for a business license or to start the structure, start the st corporate structure. There's websites that can lead you every step of the way. If you can't hire an accountant, if you can't hire the lawyer to do it, then go online and, and find one of these places that does it. You know, start, take some steps towards it. I, I would hate to be one of those when Jesus returns and says, what did you do with what I put inside of you? And I'm like, well, I was waiting for you. I was waiting for you to return. I was waiting for you to give me more science or give me more, you know, I would hate to be that person because we see through that parable, the talents that God looks at when he returned. He says, wow, you've multiplied this many. Let me give you the one that didn't multiply. I'm going to give you his talents to give you even more because you're a faithful steward of all I've put inside of you. And that's what we want to be. So I'm going to encourage you guys to share this word, share this prophetic word with your friends and your family. Let them hear it. Let it go into their spirit because some of you are at the opposite position where you feel like there's no way that I can ever do what I'm called to because there's no resource for it. You are a child of God. There's resources that you don't know of. God is connected to all the resources of the world. He owns a cattle of every hill, it says in the Bible. I know that's become a cliche in Christianity, but it's truth. And God could bring the resources, the, the, the human capital you need to resource your project, the talent, the skill, the creativity. He could bring the financial advisors. He could bring the resources itself, the finances. He could bring so many different types of resources. He's so creative that he doesn't just say to fill your bank account. Sometimes he does the most creative version of it that you would have never dreamed of. So I'm gonna encourage you to be faithful and to, if you've been hopeless, to say, God, heal 
my hope deferred. That's made my heart sick. Let me come back to a place of full faith again. Let me come back to a place where I'll fully believe. And those of you who are at that place, get ready. Get ready because what you were dreaming and hoping for, Ephesians 3.20, you didn't dream big enough. It's beyond what you can wildly dream in your, in your biggest imaginations. That's what Ephesians 3.20 says. God has something for us in store, both here on earth, but also in heaven. That's beyond what we can imagine or comprehend because he's God. When we ask him to come into our life, we get a God result, not a human result. And so if you're looking for that God result, get ready because some of you are about to be fast-tracked. And it doesn't feel like that because you've paid a price for a long season. Uh, just being faithful with what's at hand, but man, you're gonna you're gonna feel like you're on one of those people mover conveyor belts. Like, oh my gosh, events flying by me. What's happening? Because God's gonna fast track you into the dream He had for you. It's His dream first before it's your dream. And I pray that you guys would receive that. And thanks for all the amens for those of you watching live on YouTube and, and Facebook. My Facebook crowd, thank you for the come on, Sean's and the amen. I believe because it's truth. This is both biblical truth, but it's prophetic truth because I heard it from God. For us right now, that our generation, we're going to start to see the transference of power, the transference of wealth. We're going to start to see Christian CEOs, Christian billionaires, Christian millionaires using their voice, sharing that they got there because the prophetic story. They're going to share the talent story. They're going to share the spiritual story that wasn't rooted in their own ability, but rooted in God's ability. And some of you are those people who are going to be sharing your story and how you got to where you got to because only God, but God, only God could do this. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for listening to that word. And I pray it over you that God would bless your minds, bless your belief system, bless your faith in this season, even if it feels the opposite, that God is so good. Joseph was in a dungeon and then he was in Pharaoh's house leading the, the nation. And I think that some of you may feel like you're in a dungeon today, but you don't know what tomorrow holds. So bless you guys. Well, thanks for listening today and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, and make sure to hit notifications on YouTube as well. I know you have to hit that. Follow me on Facebook. We have a lot of conversations on Facebook. We don't have anywhere else. And I'm also on TikTok and, of course, Twitter. We're on Rumble. Thank you for joining us. Those of you who are rumbling us, thank you so much. We're new to your platform. We're really enjoying building there. And come on the journey of discerning what God's happening in the world from a biblical base and often prophetic perspective like today. I'll see you next time. Hey, listen, I